Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. So, I really thought this partner was going to, or excuse me, this Pioneer P51 was going to be a super simple fix. Boy, was I wrong. I think I finally figured out what's going on, uh, and I have a replacement part on the way, but I'll tell you what was up. So, I got the thing, said it had no spark. Here's the original coil. Just like a Home Light 410. I, man, piece of cake. I got a couple of these used coils laying around that I've been saving. Well, two used coils and a NOS one later to test, I still couldn't get more than a thready little pile of crap spark out of this saw. I think I've got it zoomed in enough. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to spin this over with the drill. I think you guys will be able to see the little crummy spark that, that I've got here. It's bouncing, so I don't know if you guys can see that real well. It won't even fire on the good one here. Nada. Now that's turning counterclockwise. What happens if I just reverse the drill by accident? Come on. beautiful spark if you turn the engine their own damn direction. So what does that mean? Well, it means that my instinct to order a new flywheel for this thing is probably accurate. I can't say for certain. I'm not uh, not an expert on uh, on magnetic fields and all of that. But I know that uh, Homelight offered Phelon and Wico ignition systems, both in points and in electronic ignition at one point or another. You couldn't mix those things because the flywheel magnet polarity was reversed between the two. So you might be able to get a spark, but it'd be a thready little pile of crap like the first one with just the spark plug. And the timing was off. So, I am assuming that that's what's wrong with this saw. I'm going to assume that there's a flywheel on here that was meant for a points ignition, or that the flywheel has been hit super hard at some point when, it was, when someone was trying to remove it, and it's damaged the magnetic field of the flywheel. The magnets are still strong, and usually that's my my go-to test. If it'll pull a screwdriver over or if you loosen the coil screws and it will suck the coil right over to it, usually that's good, but not in this case. I mean these saws are supposed to rotate counterclockwise, not clockwise. So anyway, I have a flywheel on order. Uh, I can't remember which part of the the East Coast it was coming from, but it was the East Coast, so it's going to be a, a few days in the next week, I would guess, Monday, uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, if it shipped priority like I think it did. So, yeah, that's the update on the P51. So no good news there. Bear with me here, I'm going to reset this. And we're going to find out how much more good or bad news might be headed this way because the SP81 arrived today. So this is ironic and almost fitting, I would say. Uh, both of these saws that I've bought, you know, explicitly for the uh, 82cc challenge will, of course, go into my collection when they're done, but they both ended up being West Coast saws. This uh, pine, uh, partner, excuse me, Pioneer, I keep doing that, is a uh, 
P51H, which means somebody, if I'm remembering all the decoding right, somebody has changed this to a full wrap handle. I believe the H stood for a half wrap. So, but this ended up shipped to me from uh, Rainier, Oregon, which is just up uh, west of Portland a little ways. So, that's cool, that's fitting. And then this guy, oh, our old SP, just arrived. And it shipped out of Brennan, Washington, which, as I, I looked it up on the map, it's on the east side of the Olympic Peninsula, so this was likely a logging saw. In fact, there's almost a guarantee at some point it was a logging saw. And it's the right age that it could have been one that was used even in the aftermath of St. Helens. Who knows? Good Lord. This is an interesting packing job, I'll say that. I don't know how kind <laughs> UPS was to it. I have to assume that it's standing on end in the box, and that's the throttle handle sticking up there. I don't know. Guess we'll find out here quick enough. What the hell? I get a kick out of some of these custom <laughs> boxes that I get in. Yeah, that's it. Throttle handle, yep. Alright. Well, the good news is I don't see anything broken. Not initially, anyway. Alright, this is one old ugly saw. Good lord. Next to no black paint left at all. That's what's left of somebody's service tag. <laughs> that starter grip is actually rotten. The rubber is shot. Wow. Huh. Now it does have a compression release. Let's see what that. Something sounds pretty, pretty sketchy there, doesn't it? All right. I'd love to finish. I wanted to finish the damn uh, Pioneer before digging into another saw, just so that I could get the thing off my, off my bench and create a little more room to work, but. You can see how well that worked out for me. Like, not at all. I really want to know now if there's a problem with that piston and cylinder on this Mac because I've got I've got a couple options if this thing turns out to be a dud. Where the hell is my half inch socket? Folks. Oh, this is ridiculous. Some point when it warms up tomorrow, I'm gonna have to come out here and get this a little bit more organized. I have no idea where the hell that went. Maybe things will come off. Anyway, I want to know what it is I'm gonna be up against here. Because If I have a dud here, and I can't find another saw, I'll either work on fixing this thing, if it's not a complete goner, or TJ has a couple of 82cc saws, you know, we could get one of them going for this challenge, and I forgot that my buddy Jim has a double eagle 80 that looks brand spanking new. Uh, I replaced the... Uh, throttle handle and carb chamber on it a couple years ago. I think there's a video out there. I'd forgotten all about it. Stumbled across it the other day and went, oh, wow. 
that thing, and if it has 20 hours on it, I'd be shocked. So worst case, I'll bet I could con Jim into letting us use that thing. But anyway, let's see. What is it gonna take? Yeah, I'm wondering if it has a bad crank bearing because that squeak isn't coming from the sprocket. Sounds terrible. Alright, bear with me. I've never taken one of these vibration isolated McCulloughs apart. Oh, like this. Hell, even on gems, I think I was able to just take the handle loose at the at the tank and slip that whole thing out. Okay. We'll just see how far we can get before my phone blows up. Oh, is that heavy? Can't tell if it's threaded behind here. It must be instead of inserts in the handle. I don't know how available, but I have a pretty good idea of how not available most of these vibration isolation buffers are, so I'm going to hope again that these things aren't totally destroyed. Anything can be found if you wait long enough. Ah. I don't have the look. Oops luxury of a huge amount of time. Spring's only a few months away. Okay. So I guess this bolt up front here, it looks like that whole buffer goes through this bottom handle. from the front here. Okay, well, again, I won't say that doesn't make sense, because it kind of does. This is just, this is foreign. This is not like anything Home Light did, I can assure you. Of that. One of the reasons I didn't feel terrible about doing or taking the risk on this particular saw was I figured in the worst case scenario some of these oddball parts I could get my money out of them again if I needed to. Okay, so she's dirty. Everybody raise your hand if you're surprised. So Normally, I'm getting way ahead of things here, but I would love, I guess we just can't. I wanted to be able to see through there, get the muffler off without taking the entire bloody saw apart and creating another pile of parts in the workbench, but since I'm... 85% certain that we're going to have to do that anyway. What the hell? Let's just get it out of the way. So anyway, back to, you know, if it's if this thing's a goner, hell, just this handlebar will probably be, be enough to recoup whatever I've got invested in the saw. So it was a fairly easy gamble to make. I swear fucking Billy Ray has... Uh, Anybody who owns one of these saws that they want to sell, they ought to give that guy a, a cut of the proceeds because he has done more to jack the value of these saws through the stinking roof than probably anybody else out there. I've seen some of these sell in excess of a thousand bucks, well in excess, up in the range that you used to just see the 
Oh, the 125, the Super Pro CP105s sell at there. These things are selling at those kind of prices now. And as I've said before, I've never been a, the biggest fan of Max. I had an old 1010, and yes, it was worn out. I knew that, and I didn't know half about working on saws that I do now. Hell, I didn't know a tenth of it. So, in hindsight, there were things I could have done to make that a much better saw, but compared to the home light that I ended up with, yeah, there was no comparison. Alright, this starter is complete. Oh! Well, I'll be dippity danged. I know what our squeak was, and it had nothing. Maybe we got lucky. Squeak went away. Check it out, folks. Some bitch is hitting the flywheel. And don't ask me why. Because I don't know. Unless, I mean, this housing's all busted to pieces. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. I take that back. I think I, think I do know why. Look here, it's actually vibrated and indented. And this whole thing is destroyed. That starter housing will be going in the trash. It's interesting. I'm going to have to go to the IPLs and see what uh, what the, uh, the part numbers are. How many of these 10 series saws actually uh, cross over. I would have just assumed that I could put a, a Mac 1010 starter cover on this thing and, you know, away you go, but I'm going to verify that. I am going to laugh if this old crusty looking bastard is the one that ends up being fixed before the, the nice looking Pioneer. Oh. But I have no idea if I have a starter cover on hand or not. DJ7J. Well, yeah. That's a tapered seat on the head. Good. Oh, hell, let's do it the right way. Where's my good tester? Oh, hey, look at that. What a mo. We're still in the... Oh, the Pioneer. Smooth move, huh? Alright. I'm going to hold this like that and assume that you guys are going to be able to see it. So I don't want to dick around with moving that camera around again. Make sure we're on a... Oh! Flywheel nut wasn't even tight. I'm going to have to go through this and all that fine-tooth comb. Alright. All right. Not enough spark to trigger the proper tester. So we'll see if it has enough to trigger just a spark plug out of the cylinder. And that's funny, she's sparking right there. At a fairly low speed, this is a points ignition, so... That part doesn't surprise me. I want. Huh. Try this again. That's interesting. Well, whatever. It's enough of that. 
get some more observations here. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. That is one of the coil mounting bolts. It has a stud on it that's supposed to come up here and attach to the starter. Remember how that was all jacked up? Well, this is loose and laying here. Oh, boy. Shit. This is going to be some work. That is broken off in the cylinder. And what that gobbledygook, that looks like JV Weld did. You gotta be kidding. I think somebody tried to JV Weld that in place. Okay, that's unique. I'll give it that. It's unique. Okay, that'll be some work. Definitely gonna be some work. When? I guess there must be a boot down under there somewhere. I'm not familiar enough with these saws. I could have, yeah, I'm not even gonna speculate. There. All right, we've got starter pawl issues. They might just need lubricated. We have to drill out that stud. Might as well put the one coil bolt back in here so it doesn't get lost. I would say that I've solved the mystery of the bad noise to the starter, or the bad noise in general. I'm going to take an optimistic point of view and say that the the engine is actually good, which was the big big issue. God, the seller, if he was telling the truth, and I don't have a reason to believe that he wasn't, the seller indicated that he actually had this thing run for a minute, and then it shut off suddenly like it had partially seized. Well... Again, we had a good joke on House of Homelight about what the hell does partially seized mean. Well, this would actually qualify if the flywheel jammed into that starter housing hard enough. I found the flywheel nut loose. It probably knocked, probably knocked the flywheel loose. I'm going to have to check that flywheel key real closely to make sure it's not jacked up. Ah. Clutch. You know, it shows some wear. Actually, a fair amount of wear. I may put a new set of clutch shoes on there. It's already a rim drive sprocket, which is good. So for the 82cc challenge, I'm going to put... Uh, I'll be consistent. I think I probably put an 8-pin rim on my, my 923. <laughs> And if that's the case, that's what's going to go on the Pioneer and this thing. Carburetor should be an HDC, or excuse me, SDC unit is. Ah. And it looks like Mac is going to have the advantage right out of the gate. Because this does not have a governor on it. Yeah, I'll worry about those kind of details once everything's running. It may not matter that much, because uh, I'm going to tune them to factory specs, all the saws. And that is what, quite frankly, that's what you would have been buying. If you were a logger back in the day and you picked one of these saws up, you got what the manufacturer gave you. Now, yeah, you might modify it, but that's not the point of this challenge. It's stock saws, so we'll go with it. A uh, fuel hose is not actually mushy. I'm shocked. That carb 
may not take a whole lot. I'll go through it, obviously. That's just what you do. <sighs> How bad is this going to look? Ooh, clean. Clean and smells more like solvent than it does. Uh, there's no moldy fuel smell. Still got the stock style filter in it. I doubt that's original. As long as that hose doesn't... Yeah, it moved. We'll see. If it leaks, I've got a kit I want to try from a guy uh, who's selling them on eBay. If you... But uh, if I end up using 3D it, I want to... I'll show you guys how it works, because he doesn't do that crap that Mac did uh, as they were in the process of going out of business and send you a tube of super glue with a plug. He's actually got uh, machined... If I remember right, his kit has a piece of machined aluminum that fits inside a grommet that's sized to fit these tanks, so that the next time you have a problem, you just slip hose on, hose on, and you can use regular aftermarket Tigon. You don't have to mess around with any garbage. So, Anyhow, I don't know these saws well enough to know if I'm looking at a, uh, at a true SP81. I know they didn't all have a compression release back here, so that's a step in the right direction. Uh, I don't think McCulloch put model numbers on anything but their air cleaner covers, but I know this cover is unique to this style of tank, which is going to be unique to this series of saws. And I know that muffler, as I'm recalling, looks about right. It looks like shit, but I can clean that up. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say I'm cautiously optimistic that I've got a true SP81 here. I'll have to, uh, if I have to go all the way into it, I'll measure the cylinder bore, and that'll tell the story, just so that I can be certain. But, uh, yeah. This may be less work than I thought in terms of money. Drilling that stud out of the cylinder, that's not going to be any kind of fun at all. But I'll grind it flat, center punch it, and I'll hope for the best there. I, uh, ever since my dad and I had to drill out, I think we did it. No, we didn't do it on the vehicle. That would have been too stupid. The old 65 Chevy busted a damn uh, exhaust flange nut and bolt years ago when we were putting a different engine in it and uh, try we tried so hard to get that straight but when you're using a, a hand drill and a vise you're just you're not going to get there so it ended up being cocked just a few degrees off so getting that flange up there just ah, yeah ever since then my tolerance and, and joy for uh, drilling out broken bolts has been because Almost always your bit wanders just a bit, just enough. So anyhow, uh, rusty on the bar, but it doesn't look like it's got a lot of time on it. A little bit of a dippy do up front here, but that's pretty common on these sprocket tips. I'm gonna guess this is a Windsor bar. It's definitely a Windsor tip. And whatever chain, that was, damn chain's brand new, it's been sitting, Carlton chain, so, yeah, doesn't look like it's ever been filed, round chisel, so this is probably about the length of bar that we'll be running too, I can't use this particular bar because it's a 5 stud, so I'll have to get a, a home light bar out, this doesn't have a length on it, looks like about a 28 maybe it's a 24 now they would have called that one a 28 I think that's probably we'll use a, a 24 or a home light calls them a 27 that will swamp between saws for the challenge so all right this video is probably longer than it ever needed to be but uh, now you can see the massive mess on my workbench I'm going to go to the computer and start finding parts for this bad boy. Wait for the flywheel to come in on that Pioneer and uh, yeah, we'll go from there.